Welcome to the Kids Church Cooking Show. I'm your host, Carl, and I can't wait to show you another super seasoning that'll add flavor to your lessons. Your teaching will be so tasty, the kids will keep coming back for more. Today, I'm excited to share with you one of my favorite seasonings, one that is guaranteed to top off your lesson. And that's right, I'm talking about hats. <laughs> that's right, a well-picked hat can really move your lesson ahead. For example, say you're teaching on the authority of God and how we need to obey Him. Coming out wearing a police hat and talking about what are the policemen and how we need to obey the police and how they're an authority in our life. And when we don't obey them, there are consequences. In the same way, we need to obey God, our ultimate authority. And when we don't obey Him, there's also consequences. Now, I have a whole collection of hats here. And I have been collecting hats for years. Some of my hats I have had since I was a kid going to kids' church. And there's all kinds of things that you can do with hats. Let me show you just a few of them. For example, let's say that you are teaching on not being crabby. Well, what better thing to do than to uh, put on a crab hat? I'm feeling very crabby today. Or maybe it's Thanksgiving and you'd like to wear a hat that uh, adequately explains um, the holiday. As the kids are arriving, I like to say, I've lost my turkey. Has anybody seen it? And of course, they're all screaming, it's on your head. Where well, I don't see a turkey. Who are you calling a turkey? Or let's suppose you're cooking up a lesson on happiness and teaching how true happiness can only come from the Lord. Well then, of course, what better hat to wear than the smiley hat? Or maybe you're teaching on the Beatitudes. Well, a perfect hat would be the bee hat. Be good little children and obey the Beatitudes. One thing that I like to do is look for really unique hats. Like I was going through the Walgreens one time and I, I found this hat, which is very cool. And you can convince the kids that you can control it with your mind. Or simply by waving your hand around, say, I'd like the hat to move now. And if they don't believe it, you just show them again, now. And when they really don't believe, you say, watch, now. And they say, it's just automatic. And say, okay, fine, now. I'll make it move twice just to prove it. Ready? Now, now. <laughs> of course, all I'm doing is memorizing the sequence of the hat. But that's a fun thing to do. Or maybe you're uh, doing a skit where you're an old man and you need to be balding. You like my overcombing old age hat? Or maybe it's a lesson on Jonah and the whale. Nothing like uh, putting a fish on your head and acting a little fishy for the children. Hmm. But what do you do when you have to pick a volunteer from the audience to participate on stage and all the kids are raising their hands? Well, one thing I like to do is to just have a, a goofy hat or a funny hat, and they sell plenty of them. And uh, after they come up, you place this on their head and you say, now, in case you're wondering why I'm putting this on your head, it's to make all the kids who didn't get picked suddenly feel better. <laughs> now I suddenly feel better. And here's one of my tips. Anytime you go to a sports game and they sell uh, souvenir hats, always pick one up. You never know when you might need a foam football helmet. Ah! Or perhaps you live in Chicago and you want to teach a lesson on showing love to your enemies. Well, that might be a good time to put on a, a cheese hat and talk about showing love to those cheese heads up north. <laughs> Actually, it would be a great hat for talking about how mice are captured by cheese when it's used as bait in a trap and how Satan also traps us by baiting us with things that look good but that ultimately can be deadly. And then there's the staple of children's ministry. I mean, what children's ministry leader shouldn't be without their beanie helicopter hat? Woo! I love my beanie helicopter hat. Or one of my favorites, my basketball hat. When you're doing sports camp and you walk around with this, the kids can't help but think you're cool. Hey, I'm not balding. I'm spalding. It's always good to keep some hats on hand. You never know when uh, you'll be called upon to uh, save the West. Western themes are a lot of fun and one good cowboy hat goes a long way. Or maybe you're uh, a little thirsty, children's ministry is wearing you down, you want to carry some Mountain Dew with you everywhere you go and have the included megaphone. 
I tell you, when you give instructions to kids with this hat, they will listen. Of course, you could be teaching a lesson on evil and how evil can be uh, found in this world. And it wouldn't hurt to have your own Darth Vader hat. Then you can tell the children, don't give in to the dark side. Otherwise, you could end up looking just like me. One time I was teaching on the Holy Spirit and I was trying to explain to the kids how he takes over your life. He, you kind of give him the, the steering wheel, so to speak. And uh, for that lesson, I happened to be a valet parker at the time. And so I wore my valet parking hat and jacket and talked about how God kind of valet parks your life. You get out and he takes over and he takes it wherever he would like it to go. One thing I've always liked to do is look for hats that have the colors of the wordless book. Now, you'll rarely find all five colors, but you may find one that has uh, uh, quite a few, like this one. Now, you can explain that uh, the black is hidden inside. And uh, we don't always see people sin, but inside where God sees, their hearts are full of darkness and evil. And yet, God sent His Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sin. And because He shed His blood and died, we don't have to die. And in fact, someday we'll get to go to heaven where the main street of Jerusalem is made of pure gold. And it's such an awesome place. No more pain, no more crying. And of course, in the meantime, we need to be growing. And the green reminds us of that that by reading the Bible and praying and going to church. If it really bothers you that the, the white is not on this hat, you, you can always uh, show the kids uh, the little white tag. It says, Made in China. Now, salvation wasn't made in China, but, but the hat was. There is no lesson that cannot be enhanced by a hat. I mean, say you're talking about sin and how it tries to swarm around us and attack us. We need to protect ourselves from sin. Well, all you do is get yourself one of these little army net hats and uh, put this guy on and talk about how is it that we shield ourselves and protect ourselves from the enemy's attacks to try and uh, poison us and, uh, and keep us from living the victorious Christian life that he'd like us to live. You know, and there's lots of things you can do with army stuff. I mean, uh, Bible boot camp is a really fun theme. You can do the Ten Commandments. as God's commandments that we need to obey if we want to be good soldiers in God's army. So an army hat always comes in handy. Or maybe you're telling a story about uh, a battle in the Old Testament. And maybe you're telling the story of Goliath. Well, why not put on a good military hat like this? <laughs> Of course, it always comes in handy to have yourself a clown hat so that you could talk about um, silliness or clowning around and how sometimes God wants us to be serious and to think about things that are important and not always be clowning around. One thing I like to do is keep an eye out for great baseball hats, really unique ones. I mean, ones that you can use to teach a spiritual lesson from. I mean, for example, you might want to teach on uh, patience uh, through tribulation and uh, looking forward to a positive future when everything looks bleak and it looks like things will never get better, but you never need to give up because you know, there's always next year. <laughs> You're right. One time I was teaching a lesson on words and I found the perfect hat. It just says blah 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 on it. Great one for talking about choosing our words wisely and avoiding the excess of words and only saying those things that edify and build up and glorify God. Blah 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 blah. Or perhaps you want to teach a lesson on how to stay on track in your Christian life. Well, a train hat's a good one, and you could talk about how it is we stay on track. And those two rails, fellowship with God and fellowship with man, and how we have to keep those in balance and keep moving forward, avoiding the landslides, letting God be our engineer so that we can stay on track in our Christian life. Keep an eye out for silly hats, funny hats, hats you probably wouldn't think of wearing, but when you do, the kids will crack up laughing. How about this cowboy hat? There's not room in this town for the two of us. The secret is keeping your eye out for unique hats and asking yourself, how could this be used in order to teach? I've got a variety of baseball hats here. This one tried to be like a college uh, fraternity sorority hat. It says glorify God and has a reference there in the Bible. Um, of course, uh, Trinity University sells uh, Trinity hats, but hey, if you're teaching on the Trinity, it's a great hat to have. All right, if, I found a hat that just said if on it. What if? Talking about the future, talking about dwelling on the what ifs, only this happens, talking about the sovereignty of God. It's a great hat. All right, found one that just had the word truth on it. 
talking about truth and what is truth. Why not wear a truth hat? And of course, I love this one, No 55. And um, I don't think I'd want to be wearing this when I got pulled over. But uh, there are people who decide they don't want to obey the rules and talking about God's commandments and why it's safer to drive 55 and what happens if you don't. And a camouflage hat could be a great thing to talk about how some Christians uh, don't even look like Christians. They're so much like the world and a part of the world that they blend right in with the world and they're kind of camouflaged. And really what we want is to stand out and for people to see that we're different. Sometimes it's fun to have a guest uh, come in that kind of acts kind of dumb. Now, please don't take it personally if you actually wear one of these hats, but have someone come to you and go, oh, I don't understand, and then you kind of help them out by uh, answering their questions. Or maybe you're teaching on um, Moses, and when he got uh, left in the Nile by his mom, and um, you could talk about uh, that, wearing a crocodile hat, talking about the dangers that were out there. Crikey, that's a big one! Or perhaps it's another holiday. Uh, could be that it's a uh, patriotic holiday, and you've got your patriotic hat, or maybe it's uh, harvest time in October, and you want to wear a little uh, a pumpkin hat. That could uh, work quite fine. Or suppose it's uh, raining outside, or you're teaching on Noah, or any Bible story that might uh, include some rain or bad weather, and you've got your umbrella hat. Very handy thing. I keep this in the glove compartment in my car. Uh, travels flat, and uh, you'll have it whenever you need it. I could go on and on showing you all of my hats. Construction hats, military, police, and firemen hats. Uh, haven't ever gotten to use this one yet, but uh, I suppose the perfect lesson is just around the corner. And uh, of course you can have the British police. Uh, if you want to be a, a, a painter or something, I could put on my beret and uh, paint a picture, talk about how God is an artist. Uh, whenever I have a beach theme, I love wearing this hat. It's just perfect. Uh, or I can switch to the uh, uh, explorer one or uh, we do a jungle theme which we've done before. And if you're doing an African theme, uh, of course you can have your safari hat and uh, of course let's not forget the uh, pirate theme. Always a fun one. And uh, to top it all off I'll end with one of my biggest hats that I actually bought in Mexico and sometimes I love to just come out with this hat. So get yourself some crazy hats. Keep an eye out for hats that maybe no one else has ever seen. In fact, if you're in the store and you see a hat and you think, who would buy that? The answer is you. Now people often ask me, Carl, where do you find these goofy hats? Well, the answer is everywhere. Now obviously you can find them at stores, but stores don't typically carry uh, goofy looking hats because let's be honest not many people buy goofy looking hats. One of the best times is seasonally during Christmas and other holidays you can often find some really wacky and unusual hats and after the holiday is the best time to buy hats because most people didn't buy them and they're on sale after the holidays over. Now of course the internet is a fantastic place that you can uh, buy some hats. In fact you might be able to actually search for a type of hat you're looking for and you may find it. Maybe even on eBay you find a goofy hat. But one of the best places I have found to buy hats is literally on vacation. When I go to unique places, I find unique hats, especially in those tourist stores, wherever you happen to be on vacation. They'll have something unique that has to do with the local area or the history of the area or whatever is in that area that makes it unique. And that's where you'll find some awesome hats. But how do you go about choosing a hat? Well, let me give you five things that you can do. Number one, you can choose a hat that goes along with your theme. All right, Whatever your theme is, think about what hat would best illustrate that theme. A jungle theme would have a hat like this. And there's all kinds of fun themes out there and almost always there's a hat to go along with that theme. But you also might think about what hat would best illustrate what I'm teaching. Maybe it's harvest time and, and you're doing an object lesson about a pumpkin. Well, you could have a pumpkin on stage as your object lesson or you could actually wear a pumpkin hat while you're doing the object lesson. You also want to think about hats that will define characters. This is especially good in skits. In fact, a well-chosen hat can eliminate the need for an entire costume. If you've got a villain in your story, obviously he can wear a pirate hat. If you have a little kid in the story, he can wear a little beanie hat. The hat can define the character so the audience knows what to expect from that person. But you may also be just looking for a hat that will elicit a response. The response I like to get most often is simply laughter. But lastly, you want to think about what 
hat will be most memorable. And um, I tell you, when kids remember a hat, they'll remember why you wore it. They'll remember the less thing goes with it. And I've had kids years later ask me, do you still have that bumblebee hat? Do you still wear that turkey hat every Thanksgiving? They remember the hats. They remember that you love them and that you were goofy and you liked doing whatever would interest and engage them. And that makes you an awesome chef of the Word of God. Now you might be wondering, how in the world do you find the perfect crazy goofy hat when you're writing a lesson and suddenly you need a hat to fit the lesson? Well, honestly, it usually works the other way around. You keep an eye out for really cool, crazy, funny, obscure, goofy hats and you collect them. And then in, later, uh, you'll be working on a lesson and you'll finally go, aha! This is the lesson when I can use that hat that I bought three years ago. Or the right hat might actually inspire an entire lesson built around that hat. Because as you think, how can I use this hat in a lesson? You will suddenly get an idea. You'll buy the hat, you'll write the whole lesson, and the hat becomes the capstone, get it, of that entire lesson. So start building your own collection of crazy and goofy hats. When the kids come in and they see you wearing one, they're going to crack up laughing. But they're also going to connect with you and they're also going to be more engaged in your lesson. Just like an object lesson, a hat can enhance your lesson. It can get them uh, thinking about it and give them something to remember. In fact, when they go home and they're telling their parents about this crazy hat that you had on, it'll also help stimulate a conversation about why you were wearing the hat and what the lesson was about. So. From the Mad Hatter to you, go out and buy some crazy hats and start adding some fun flavoring to your lessons. Until next time, this is Carl on the Kids Church Cooking Show. Just for the record, no hats were harmed in the making of this show.